You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show number 291 for the 20th of December 2019. Where dreams begin. Well, hello and welcome to this very special Disney Dream Girls podcast. On this show, you are going to get a trio of our good friends who Disney podcast. Coming up first, we have got the lovely Curtis Stone from Geeking on WDW podcast. Then we would like to welcome James from Creepy Kingdom. And finally, to end off the trio, our lovely friends from Diz Down Under, Kat and Lewis, are going to talk a little about Christmas and them. Hope you enjoy the show. Where dreams begin. Hello, Michelle and Jane and everyone in the Disney Dream Girls family. This is Curtis Stone from the Geekin' on WDW podcast. I want to thank Michelle for inviting me to join in on these messages of Christmas down at Walt Disney World for Minxmas. This is so cool, Michelle, that you do this every year. And I really appreciate you involving my Geekin' family and sharing some Christmas messages about Disney World and being down there for Christmas. I can remember I took my family when they were young. We went down to Disney World at Christmas time. It's it's kind of a weird thing to go from New England. I'm from Connecticut in the United States. And to be here for Christmas is really beautiful with the snow. And it really looks like Christmas to go down to a, a warm place like Florida. But it is Disney World. So that was really fun. The kids were wondering if Santa Claus would still come, even though they were down in Florida. <laughs> He, he came to our house still, and he left some presents for the kids when we got home. So we didn't miss out on Christmas, even though we were down in one of our favorite places, Disney World. And it is a special time of the year to be down in Disney World. Of course, you've got all of the beautiful decorations, which they we saw them. I was down there this year. Right after Halloween, they started putting up the Christmas decorations. You know how Disney converts right from Halloween to Christmas. And you can't miss all the beautiful resorts and all the decorations. You know, our fans of our podcast love all of that. You know, you can get some snow on Main Street in Magic Kingdom. And of course, you've also got the New Year's if you can stay there for the New Year's party. So it is a very special time. I think some of the people that I speak with, they're always concerned about the crowds because Christmas time, that's especially that week of Christmas, is one of the busiest times to go to Disney World. And everyone was always asking us, when's the best time to go to Disney World? And what they're usually asking is, when are the crowds not so crowded? <laughs> but here's my response to that and my tip around crowds, guys. Disney does such a great job of keeping the parks packed with people. Yes, there are some times where it's a little less crowded, but for the most part, here's the thing. You're going to have to use all of your crowd beating strategies, no matter what time of the year you go to Disney World. All of your favorite big attractions are going to have long, long lines. So you've got to use strategies like the extra magic hours. Staying at the Disney resorts will get you those extra magic hours. Take advantage of those in the morning or late at night if they have those events. Some of those are paid events. Take advantage of those if you want to do more rides and beat some of the crowds. Of course, use your fast passes. Use them strategically. Learn how to use them and use as many as you possibly can to beat those. Rope dropping those parks early in the morning, you'll be able to get on a lot of those tough to get on attractions. And you're going to do that whether you're going at Christmas time or any time of the year. And of course, get your Advanced dining reservations, 180 days out. Do all those strategies that beat crowds and you will be just fine. You will enjoy Disney World at Christmas time. So when everyone asks when's the best time to go and they're worried about crowds, that's not the question to ask. The question is ask, how can I beat the crowd? So listen to your podcasters. There's lots of strategies out there to do that and, and you'll be just fine. You'll enjoy Christmas time. It's such a special time. It's such a family place and Christmas time is for family. Thank you, Michelle and Jane, for including me in your podcast family. And from the Geekin' on WDW podcast family, we wish you and yours a very special Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Where dreams begin. Hey there, Disney Dream Girls listeners. It is I, James H. Carter II, from the Creepy Kingdom Podcast Network, here to talk to you today about not only one of my favorite holiday things to watch on television but it's also a little creepy too but most importantly very very disney because i'm going to talk to you today about 
the 1983 holiday special Mickey's Christmas Carol. Now, I'm a child of the 80s, so this premiered when I was uh, a little kid, and I loved it from the first time I watched it, and I try to make it an annual tradition to watch this along with a few other staples every Christmas Eve. You know, Rudolph, Frosty, Charlie Brown, Christmas Comes to Packland, but that's a different story. This special is, of course, an adaptation of Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol. And it is significant for a few reasons. Uh, The first reason, which I was obviously unaware of as a child, but learned as I became an adult, that this special was the first original Mickey Mouse cartoon produced in over 30 years. That's right. They had not made a Mickey Mouse cartoon for over 30 years. This was released in 1983, and the last original Mickey Mouse cartoon was... In 1953. So that's pretty significant right there. Actually, now that I think about it, I did recall that as I was watching as a child that this was new and that all the other Mickey Mouse things I had seen was very old and this seemed very new. (laughs) So I guess I did know that. Anyways, the other cool thing about it is the cameo appearances from lots of characters. Of course, the Fab Five are in there, but there's also... uh, Jiminy Cricket in there, some characters from Robin Hood, and some characters uh, from Mr. Toad, which I thought were uh, pretty cool. This was also the first time I remember seeing Scrooge McDuck. This um, special aired before DuckTales came on, so, so this is the first memory I have of seeing Scrooge McDuck playing his namesake, of course. But the reason I really love it is... For all the spookiness in there, of course, Christmas Carol is a ghost story, as Scrooge is visited by different ghosts. The first two ghosts, first one played by Goofy, which is hilarious, and the second one, Jiminy Cricket, obviously not that menacing as ghost, but the third ghost, the ghost of Christmas future, played by Mickey villain Pete. He really adds the intensity and the creepiness that I love. (laughs) Including that glimpse into Scrooge's death. It gets really dark. (laughs) And the fires of hell are even raised in this holiday special. A few other tidbits of trivia about this special. It was the last time that Clarence Nash, the original voice of Donald Duck, performed as Donald Duck. And it was the first time that Alan Young did the voice of Scrooge McDuck, who would go on to do Scrooge McDuck up until his death in 2016. This special was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. Did not win, but it was nominated. And it was the first nomination for a Mickey Mouse short since 1948's Mickey and the Seal, which I have no idea what that is. (laughs) Over the past few years, Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World has had window displays of scenes from this special during the holidays, which I think is really cool. I have yet to see it in person, but I like that they pay tribute to this special that I love so much. If you have not seen this special, there's a few ways you can go about checking it out. For those of you that subscribe to Disney+, Plus, it is featured on there as one of the... Uh, launch date titles so it's sitting there waiting for you but if you don't have access to disney plus it has been released on vhs and dvd and blu-ray throughout the years and it's also available to rent on various streaming platforms and other than that if you're savvy enough i'm sure you could figure it out Alrighty, well, I've been James H. Carter II from creepy kingdom and just reminding you this holiday season to keep christmas Creepy. Merry Minxmas. Where dreams begin. G'day and welcome to Christmas Down Under. <laughs> you didn't expect that, did you? Very nice. Well, I'm Catherine. And I am Lewis. And um, we're here to talk about Christmas. We are. Because I'm sure we've got a very different perspective on Christmas than uh, you know, other other podcasts that don't come from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, being um, in the old Southern Hemisphere and, and being in Australia... 
It, it, it's pretty warm at Christmas. It is. It is. Like, gen- generally speaking, our, our Christmas days are somewhere between 35 and 40 degrees Celsius, uh, which now I've got now. Oh, now you've got to convert it. Now, now you've got to try and convert it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, lots of, um, lots of cooling off activities generally on the old Christmas day for us. Although this will be the first Christmas that we don't have access to a pool. Now, my money on, it, sorry, my money is on that. I think next Christmas will probably not be in Perth. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a, uh, 35 degrees is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, okay. So quite hot. Reasonably hot, yes. And what, 40 must be around the 100 degrees. I reckon uh, I reckon 40 is, I'm going to say 115. Really? Let's see, let's see what, how that goes. Uh, Wasn't there a couple of Christmases where it was like 44 degrees or something ridiculous like that? No, I think it's 104, sorry. Oh, see, I told you around the 100. Yeah. Um, anyway, going back to what I was mm. saying, um, yeah, I've got money on that next Christmas you'll be like, yeah, do we need to be in Perth? <laughs> Maybe we don't need to be in Perth for Christmas. Maybe we could be somewhere cooler. Yeah, well, we, 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 shall, we shall see. Maybe we'll somewhere see. with a little bit of Disney magic. Yeah, we'll see if we can survive this uh, this Christmas. Um, what was your favourite Disney Christmas thing away? My favourite Disney Christmas thing away, like I like I loved Paris. Like Paris was was great and really magical because uh, we happened to go to London first and spent mm-hmm. a bit of time in London, and then we went to Paris itself and spent a bit of time in Paris. But then we got to Disneyland Paris just before New Year's Eve, mm-hmm. and it was still Christmassy. Like all the Christmas decorations were up. Oh yeah, um, there still were, had snow yeah, falling from the sky. There were kids like singing Christmas carols and stuff. So that was awesome. And then the the day afterwards. And we were in the park and everything was like literally frozen over and we met uh, Anna and Elsa. It was just... Uh, Anna and Elsa didn't exist then. Well, no, that was, that was. Really? Yeah. Oh. Don't you remember? We went like... Oh, the queue. Yeah, yes. the queue. Yes, yeah. <laughs> You're just trying to block it out. Um, yeah, so so that was really good. But I must admit, I, I loved uh, being in... Uh, Shanghai for Christmas because we've been to Shanghai yeah. for Christmas twice now. Yeah, and it's it's really lovely because the uh, the Chinese are kind of just starting to embrace Christmas, and so it's interesting seeing like people who are not you know traditionally uh, celebrators of Christmas you know starting to put up decorations and you know just starting to to un- see the, uh, the the holiday a bit and table decorations like the Christmas lettuces. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's pretty cool, but and also the. Yeah, just getting the rug up a bit, as weird yeah. as it sounds. I know people who live in cold climates probably just go, oh, it's so annoying. But for us, it's kind of like, you know, it's so out of the ordinary for us to be, uh, you know, wearing Christmas jumpers and getting rugged oh, we up don't. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you know, you've got Christmas singlets, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that is, I think, part of the thing with Christmas. There's so much American and British culture, um, you know, in, in terms of TV and film that we see. And that's what you see growing up mm, is all mm. the Christmas movies and stuff like that for us were based in these colder climates where people would be having these roast dinners and 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 wearing ugly Christmas jumpers. I mean, you know, how old were you? You were in your late 30s before you got to wear an ugly Christmas jumper. Yes, true, true. <laughs> that's, that's a sad life, mm. Lewis. But the, uh, and the thing is that in Australia, like, there, there are some people who will do the full, like, slap up a uh, roast dinner mm-hmm. with, like, roast vegetables and the turkey and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I think the majority of us, uh, we, we probably the have... The turkey on the barbecue? Yeah, do a bit of turkey on the barbie and get that sorted out. And then you had salads and uh, a lot of cold stuff. Um, and then something that's probably very Australian is that, you know, most Christmases you'll have prawns and things like that. Like mm, a bit of, a bit of the old seafood. cold seafood. Yeah. Mm, mm. I can't stand cold prawns. No, no, you're not a fan of them. No, the, not a fan at all. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's pretty for, much. And for, for our friends in America, that's a shrimp. Oh, yeah. We're referring to a shrimp uh, <laughs> there is a, is a, is a prawn. <laughs> oh, thank you for translating. Yeah, that's all right. Here to help. Oh, hang on. So, are they? No, they're not ugly Christmas jumpers. They're ugly Christmas sweaters. Sweaters, yeah. Sweater. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much Christmas from our perspective. And um, is there anything else that you want to cover off on? No, no. I, just, I, I think that's uh, that's pretty much the the, the Australian Christmas. And uh, uh, I hope that everyone out there has a happy, fun, and safe festive season. Well said, Lewis. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, um, that's the Diz Down Under crew saying Merry Christmas and um, Happy New Year. Bye. Where dreams begin.
So that's Jane and myself signing off from this extra special Minxmas. If you want to catch any of the shows featured on this special Minxmas, why not get in touch with them? You can find their details on our blog, DisneyDreamGirls.com. But until our next show, it's a goodbye from us. This podcast is part of the After Dark Podcast Network.